Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I want to talk about monster exchanging for New Year's Lutina. So the last few days slash weeks have been kind of un pleasant for myself in terms of like health pain problems but i feel like this is worth at least discussing so i monster exchange for this yesterday evening and i realized i should probably make a follow-up video discussing it so i had at least three plus copies left over when monster exchanging i had five new year's camis i don't know why but now i have three just in case they become cool again i think five is completely unnecessary three is a pretty good number to keep for seasonals godfest exclusives i still kept three of everything so the reason why i traded for new year's lutina is because she has multiple different valuable forms and yes it is an expensive trade in terms of godfest exclusives but if you take a look at her weapon assist her first one is a skill boost, team HP, seven combo. Never bad awakenings to have. Like these are always useful. Doubling a card's personal damage, more skill boost, more team HP, always a good time. But the active skill is two turns of attribute absorption and void damage void for two turns and then a four turn delay. One of those aspects is probably gonna be useful and because of the longish cooldown, it's probably gonna be used up front at the beginning of a dungeon. Conversely, her other weapon assist is triple team HPs and four enhanced water orbs. Obviously for water-based teams is a little bit zestier, but at the same time, every other team can benefit from this, especially if you utilize orb changers, you know, make a better board. Furthermore, these enhanced orbs can counteract the negative orbs to a certain extent. So from an awakenings point of view, it's like kind of like a match minus the skill boost, but you get OEs instead. But at the same time, this active skill is quite magical. It's 11 or a five turn cooldown. So you have to obviously like skill it up accordingly based on when you think you need it. But the active skill is the same as her base form. It gives you no skyfalls, voids, attribute absorption for two turns. And if it's on floor six or earlier, you also get damage absorption. So it can solve multiple different problems at the beginning of a dungeon. And two turns is kind of like a great number. Furthermore, it's a nice big health stat when you think about it. So water-based cards will gain a significant amount of on stat HP and reasonable attack stat transfer. So those two weapons are pretty great. And make sure you obviously stack up large numbers of these pad New Year's cards from the monster point shop. So in case you need to evolve, unevolve, switch forms. But at the same time, her light dark form is an incredible cleric. So when you look at the super awakening, it's either 10 combos, so five times more personal damage, any super resist, or there's six skill boosts instead of four. Pretty great super awakening choices. And the damage output is quite high with a 10, well, two 10 combos plus six TPAs. Obviously, it's going to be dealing large amounts of damage. But at the same time, their active skill is a three turn cooldown that gives you light and dark orb skyfall, and you fully recover all bind and awoken skill binds. And it's a three turn cooldown. So, cleric base needs are becoming much more stressful nowadays, so to speak. There's a lot of repeated floors, like potentially back to back, of either unmatchable, awoken skill binds, so on and so forth. And New Year's Latina can counter that because the active skill is a three turn cooldown to clear all those awoken and regular binds. But because of their six TPAs, they can take the unmatchable latent and they will clear six turns of worth of unmatchable as long as they match four light or four dark orbs. And that should be reasonably doable for most given boards. It doesn't matter which color it is, as long as one of those is a TPA, you're clearing six turns of unmatchable, and this obviously stacks with each TPA. So in terms of like clericing capability, she's blisteringly fast, has high damage output, has a respectable amount of skill boost, a low base cooldown to inherit whatever you need on top of her. So as a whole, because I feel like she has three great forms with two of them being useful weapon assists, I was inclined to monster exchange for her because I feel like it will be useful to have moving forward. There are plenty of times where I was like thinking, I want these blue weapon assists at some point because they provide valuable effects that I just can't necessarily replicate. So I think it was definitely a worthwhile trade and I did have excessive amounts of Godfest exclusive fodder because well, player's choice Godfest along with other previous Godfests and not really monster exchanging too much beforehand. But with that being said, hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight because it's kind of like last minute. I feel like I should have possibly done this a little bit sooner. Not in an event, it's in, it's in the event tab because it expires tomorrow or so. So like you can trade it tomorrow, but that's all it is. So today, tomorrow, that's it. So I think it was definitely worthwhile. I do look forward to trying to utilize her. And in terms of like the other cards worth monster exchange for, you can make some arguments for New Year's Reach because I do have one. Don't use them very often though, because I do have other options. But at the same time, a 30 turn cooldown with four turns of skill charging, essentially with their various awakenings plus naturally when you match orbs, you are able to potentially have 
an eight turn cooldown with seven turns of damage and attribute absorption cancellation. Basically 100% uptime, which is pretty magical when you think about it. Like it is definitely worthwhile if you don't have other good solutions. I do have Valentine's Akine, so I feel like, oh, I already had both, so, but yeah. And nothing else I really feel like stands out worth monster exchanging outside of Lutina, I feel for the most part. Ladro's weapon assist is still quite powerful. It's skill boost, double team HP, RCV, and tape resist. And along with the fact that the active skill gives you massive damage reduction for two turns. So this weapon assist is incredibly similar to Mebius. This is weapon assist. And if you did have them from the Ultraman collab, you may not need it as much because they fulfill nearly a similar role. So for myself, I have this card. So I don't need to monster exchange for New Year's Ladro. But if you don't have Mebius's Brace, I think New Year's Ladro is a spectacularly strong tape resist solution because tape resist can sometimes be a little awkward and it, in terms of awakenings it comes with great awakenings big shield up front at the beginning never going to be a bad thing to have but with that being said i don't think there's necessarily any other great standout monster exchange options so i'm much more inclined to just maybe just trade for lutina and stop i'm going to try and do a common rider review soon but it's been difficult to like do things lately so it's coming soon or maybe i'll find a way to like shorten it and somehow either way hope this video provides you with a little bit of insight and let me know in the comment section down below if these types of monster exchanging videos are useful and or helpful because maybe it helps you out a bit maybe it doesn't either way i wish you all the very best looking your own pad adventures and happy puzzling